Well, 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 beautiful people, best damn nation. It is Wednesday, and you know what time it is. It is the best damn wrestling podcast. I am your humble host, Brian Renegade, and with me, I have the best damn crew. First of all, uh, I got my player, pimp partner in the building. Uh, we call him Senor Fuego. He is a chef. He is a wrestling historian. And he is a certified G. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Chef Showtime. What's happening, Chef? What's good? What's good? How you guys? How you doing today? Oh man, blessed and highly favored as the old folks say, and as I always say, my friend. Hope you had a good weekend, man. I worked all weekend. <laughs> oh man, you worked all weekend. Well, hopefully you had an opportunity to check out uh WWE Payback Man uh and and uh AEW Collision. There's been a lot of stuff going on, Jack. You know what I'm saying? I hope you uh uh, uh your ears are percolating to what's going on out here in these streets. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Listen. Uh Best Dev Nation, thank you for joining us each and every Wednesday, like you do. Uh if you're listening to us online, uh, we're on Pandora, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, Stitcher, um, Audible, Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcast, you can listen to the fellas at the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast, or you can watch our uh, broadcast live each and every Wednesday on uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, um, and then you can watch all of our repurposed content on my social media pages. Thank you for joining the show. Let's talk about some wrestling. <laughs> Shit. Man, I think that one of the big storylines that's been going around uh, for a couple of days, and I kind of hate that we only uh, broadcast on on Wednesdays, man, because it seems like so much happens in such a little time between the time that we have our uh, our Wednesday broadcast and then the next Wednesday broadcast. It's so much crap that started happening. We got to talk about it. <laughs> uh, if you're not into wrestling, I don't care. We are a fun podcast. We are a fun podcast. We talk shit. All the time, and you gonna hear us talking some today. Is that cool with you? I hope it is. If it ain't, I don't give a damn. Let's talk about some wrestling. Uh, chef, one of the big things that's going on right now is your boy who can't stay out of the news, can't stay out of the spotlight. Man, uh, the one and only CM Punk has just been fired uh, by your boy Tony Khan, man. Uh, this has been going on for a while. Um, the back and forth between Tony, uh, excuse me, the back and forth between CM Punk and the backstage area. Not a lot of people like feel. Not a lot of people like CM Punk. And for some reason, he has been, uh, pulling on the tiger's tail for some time. And Tony Khan almost was like, I had no other choice but to fire CM um, when he said that and announced that on Saturday's show at Collision, there were a rain of booze that came down. Uh, and I believe they were in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. And you know that is Punk's home turf, Jack. That is his home turf. Um, and this is coming from from Sports Kita. After Tony Khan announced that he had fired CM Punk uh, on AEW Collision, eighty nine thousand people. Logged off. 89,000. Um, I think that the total viewership by the end of the show was like around 200,000 or something like that. Those are very, very low numbers for a Saturday show that's already kind of struggling. You know what I'm saying? And now with CM Punk out, what does that look like? Does AEW have a star that they can depend on, are they going to rely on homegrown talent or not? 
inquiring minds would like to know. But Tony Khan said, hey, CM Punk don't run this place. I run this place, and I had to get rid of CM Punk for my own personal safety. Whether you believe it or not, uh, Tony Khan had to make a decision, man, that was best for the locker room, best for business, and best for uh, AEW, man. Chef, I want to hear some of your feedback on uh, CM Punk. You know, we've been talking about him for the last two podcasts, man, about, you know, stirring up trouble, man, and, you know, apparently it's gotten to him. Uh, let's talk about that real quick, man. CM Punk, do you think Tony Khan was valid in his firing of CM Punk? <sighs> To a certain extent, to a certain extent, I feel he is valid firing him. But if eighty nine thousand people logged off after you fire CM Punk, that number is going to double next time. Mm. CM Punk brought the controversy. He brought all the shenanigans that made it interesting. You know, but you know, I, I get at the same time you get tired of it. But that brings ratings, and I got a feeling they rating is about to drop. I can definitely see their ratings uh starting to drop, man, and people that them losing viewership. Uh, but you know, the thing about AW that makes it a little bit different from WWF is that they always have fresh rotating talent that's coming in and out, and they can place any players where they need to, but can the current AEW roster be able to carry on uh, during CM Punk's leave? You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the, that's the, the big question. Do they have big enough stars uh, that can draw these crowds, man, that they had, uh, you know, back at uh, Wembley Stadium? They had 80,000 people at their all-in event, and then they just had all-out not too long ago. Um can they carry on this momentum? I think that they can if they make the right decisions, man. But this CM Punk firing, I think it's I think it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. It's a blessing because, you know, the locker room uh, is getting rid of someone who they view as uh, a cancer in a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, and then on the other end, you know, they they have to step up. You know, AEW loses a huge star uh, in CM Punk. So, where does that leave AEW? Where does that leave Tony Khan? That's that's a big question, man. And I know Mr. Everything kind of went on a, a, a tirade last week. and said, man, why don't you just sit down and shut up and make your money? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just tell him to sit down and shut up and make your money. Uh, but in this case, He's been sat down and he's been shut up. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what, what how is, long? That's a good question for how long. They like to fire him or bring him right back. They uh, possibly, but with Tony Khan saying that he feared for his life, I don't see them bringing CM Punk back anytime. How can you say it's, you fear for your life and somebody threaten your life and then all of a sudden they show up on TV next week? You know what I'm saying? I don't see I don't see how that how that kind of plays in, in uh in, in Tony Khan's uh favor, man. But you know, with CM Punk being gone, like I said, it's an opportunity for other stars to step up. And the only question is who is gonna step up to the plate, man. Um let me ask you a question, Chef. Do you see any stars from AEW kind of uh stepping up in that in that right? No. Nobody gonna bring ratings like CM Punk was doing it. Nobody's gonna bring ratings like CM Punk. Nah, no, nobody got that that what you call that pizzazz that'll make you like, oh, let's just watch it because of him. No, no, nobody got that right now. Nobody got the pizzazz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pizzazz for that ass. Okay, all right, all right. Well, man, listen, I think this is a. Uh, this is huge news, man. So where does CM Punk go from here? You know what I'm saying? Does he does he retire? Uh, does he go to WWE? When you know, I think that's still a possibility. I don't know if CM Punk really wants to be over there. Obviously, he was trying to uh, 
I think he was backstage. We had reported that he was backstage uh, at one of the major events. I believe it was the Royal Rumble. He wanted to come in during the Royal Rumble. I don't, you know, that never ended up happening. But with CM Punk being fired from AEW, there's a strong person. Uh, there's a strong uh, possibility that CM Punk may come to WWE. And if that does happen, will the fans embrace CM Punk? Mm. That is the question of the decade. Fans, I want you to go in the comment box and I want you to go on our social media pages. And uh, if you think that CM Punk will be good in WWE after all these years and all that crap talking that he's done about the company, man, will he go back home to the WWE? Good question. Inquiring minds will want to know. Uh, let's move off of your boy CM Punk real quick. Uh, one of your absolute favorites, man, uh, had a birthday. I believe it's today, if I'm not mistaken, man. We want to wish... Your boy Brian Strowman, the monster among men, a very happy birthday. Man, Braun Strowman just uh he's still recovering uh from a uh, a surgery that he had not so long ago. I believe it was a back surgery. And uh, you know, he's still recovering from that. So we're we're anxiously uh, waiting for the arrival of Braun Strowman. I know you are, Jim. I know you are. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm just, I'm wondering if they're going to do, uh, I wonder if they're going to, I want Braun Strowman to come back to fulfill Bray Wyatt's little, you know, little legacy. I want that to happen badly. Him, Bo Dallas. Um, you know, the only, the only, see, the only thing with that is uh, Bray Wyatt was a one of one. Meaning that he can talk. He was captivating. Uh, he had all of the fans feeding on his every emotion. I don't know if Braun Strowman, Eric Redbeard, or even Bo Dallas, his brother, can actually captivate uh, the WWE and wrestling uh, world the way that Bray Wyatt did. So carrying on Bray Wyatt's legacy, I mean, that's great. I think I hope that that does happen in some type of way or capacity. But do I see that happening right now? Eh, not really. <laughs> not really. I don't really see that happening. Um, and, you know, like I said, you know, Bray Wyatt was a talker, man. And so I don't think that Braun Strowman or uh, or Bo Dallas or uh, Eric Redbeard can can feel uh, his shoes, man. I, you know, the wrestling world lost a real one. Uh, when Bray Wyatt passed away, man, and a lot of people were sad about that. I think this this uh, death is kind of up there around around the fields of when Eddie Guerrero died, man. It kind of has that same impact on the wrestling world. And so, uh, you know, rest in peace to Bray Wyatt. Uh, but I would love for Braun Strowman to come back. But if Braun Strowman comes back, let him come back and be Braun Strowman. Uh, but with a little storyline and a little personality. You know what I'm saying? Uh, going from one bra to another one, man, did you catch NXT last night? No, nah, I missed it. Woo. I pull it well, man, listen, uh, <laughs> there was a spot, uh, between the uh, Braun Breaker and Von Wagner match, which was, uh, I believe, it was a no holds barred kind of kind of feel. Uh, Braun Breaker, uh, defeated Von Wagner, but at the end of the match, man, uh, Von Wagner had got sent to the hospital because Braun Breaker picked up the metal stairs while Von Wagner's head was laying on it. He picked up the stairs and crushed his skull. I don't know if he crushed it. I just know he had some lesions. He was bleeding from it. You know, the top, they blacked out the screen when it happened, uh, but fan videos are always great because they show you exactly what happened. Uh, Braun Breaker hit, hit him with the stairs, man. And uh, I don't know if that spot was supposed to happen. I don't know if Braun Breaker kind of went off cuff. Uh, but if the spot was supposed to happen to a certain extent, I think Braun Breaker did not hit his mark. And he kind of 
Well, obviously he is Mark, but um, and they got us talking about it right now because it's, it's big respiratory news and it's all over the place. But that injury looked pretty, pretty severe, man. And I hope that Von Wagner is able to come back and recover from that. And then we also see a, a good feud going on between Von Wagner and Brian Breaker. But this is the first time that we've really talked about Von Wagner. You know what I'm saying? And I hate that it's in this context because he can he can go in the wrestling ring. He just really does. He doesn't have a personality, and he looks a little bit like a Neanderthal, you know, saying old school cage man. You know, we remember them commercials from Geico commercials. <laughs> he looks like a <laughs> the caveman. Man. Yeah, he got that caveman look. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but but uh, we're we're gonna see what happens between um, Braun Breaker and Von Wagner with this injury, man. Uh, it looked pretty bad, man, and I think a lot of people will really worry backstage when it actually happened. Uh, but Brian Breaker, man, I think that boy is ready for the big time. Go ahead and bring him up to main roster, man. Let him uh, decimate some people. Um, I will. I think that he's ready. He had a little stint as a heel, and if this doesn't put him up there as a heel, uh, and he doesn't have any disciplinary actions from what happened, um, I would love to see Brian Breaker come on to uh, one of the major shows, man. But you know, we wish him well wishes to Von Wagner, man. Uh, that was that was a pretty bad spot. Um, but I think the Braun Breaker is ready now. Will he get penalized from uh, from from this uh, incident that he had with Von Wagner? I don't know. Should he get penalized? I don't know. What you think, Chef? No. <laughs> I just want Braun Breaker to get to get brought back up to the big leagues so he can beat off in Gunther. I want him to beat Gunther down. That didn't sound right the way you said that, Chef. I love what I said. <laughs> that did not sound the way it sounded in your head. You no, want him not. to beat off no, on Von Wagner? <laughs> what kind of porn you watch? Von Wagner to break you. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's a that's a that's a good one. Let's talk about your boy Gunther since you just mentioned it, man. He had a knockout, drag out fight with your boy Chad Gable, man. That was an absolute uh classic of a match man and we talked about it on the podcast a little little while ago before everybody started jumping on the train uh but man your boy uh shorty g <laughs> aka um uh what's the, what's the boy name <laughs> bring it for come on come on help me, help me. i forgot he got oh man name. Well, uh, anyway, Gunther uh, absolutely solidified his legacy in becoming the longest reigning intercontinental champion in history, beating the Honky Tonk Man's record. Uh, the Honky Tonk Man held that record for, for damn near 20, 30 years, probably. It was, it was a long time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was a Honky Tonk Man fan. Actually, he was just down here in, uh, in Tucson not too long ago. Uh, and I wanted to go down there and, and interview him and ask him how he felt about um, Gunther breaking his record. Uh, but I didn't get an opportunity to uh, to actually do that. But man, Gunther is a certified legend now, man. He is after a year. Do you understand that? After a year in WWE on main roster, he has surpassed a WWE legend. Honky Tonk Man in his record and became the longest reigning intercontinental champion ever. Chef, what you think about it? that's your boy Gunther? Well, I know uh, that's LP's boy. But I know you don't care too much for Gunther, but what do you think about Gunther Man becoming the longest reigning intercontinental champion ever? I feel Gunther should have lost that match. What? Yeah, he should have lost that match. You know, you know me. I don't like Gunther. You know, Gunther could trip and break his leg, and I'll be like, good. Heaven Jesus safe. Christ, Jeff. It's a good accomplishment for him, though, you know. That's going to put him into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, he's a certified legend already. I mean, the boy is only a year in. Oh, I don't know anybody who's had a meteoric rise like Gunther has. From the time he stepped on main roster to now. Roman. 
He's only been beat one time, and that was by Chad Gable, and that was via countout. That man is a certified legend, and when Seth Rollins eventually has to drop the belt to somebody, I think that Gunther should be that guy. I think that, well, this is the thing. Can <laughs> Gunther carry a show? We know he can have matches. We know he can speak a little bit. Uh, we know that he can absolutely he can absolutely destroy anybody that comes in that ring with him. But the question is, can he carry a show? Can he carry a brand? You don't think so, Chef? You know what just what what just popped into my head right now? I can see like the move up of Braun Breaker coming to the main roster challenge. Seth Rollins and take the belt. Mm. I can see him carrying the show. Okay. You can see Braun Breaker carrying the show, but not Gunther. Gunther is more Best Damn Nation. You got you gotta put you gotta put something in the comment box. Do you see Gunther carrying raw? Now nah, because Gunther he, me, I honestly think his whole thing is Imperium. I mean with that like how it looks like they about to break up. He, he ain't about to carry the show how by itself. He needs help. You feel me? Like Brown Breaker, he can do it by himself. I can say I can. Who else? Uh, who's the who's the champ right now? What's that dude name? I forgot his the, the black dude name already. What, what brand? NXT. Black. Uh, black he, he took the belt from Wesley. Oh, uh, Carmelo Hayes. I can see Carmelo Hayes, you know, running the show. You know I mean, he'll hold the show for it. But who all right, so this, this is my this is my thing, right? Um, I think that Carmelo Hayes is an absolute star. I think Carmelo Hayes has everything that he needs to become champion in WWE right now. He is the NXT champion. My problem with my problem with him is I don't know if his character is strong enough to carry a brand. I don't know if he's appealing enough and interesting enough for him to carry on storylines. And I'm not saying that he can't. I'm not saying that he has not. I'm just saying that from a business standpoint, is Carmelo Hayes your guy? Is Carmelo Hayes at five foot what is he? Five foot ten, five foot eight, something like that. Five ten. Is he your guy to carry your brand? Is he your next Shawn no Michaels? No, Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio was a different beast. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Mysterio had fan appeal. Ray Mysterio is one of the greatest luchadors of all time. Even when he first came into WWE, he was fighting monsters. Now I can I can see Carmelo because you, you already see how WWE do him. They bring him into they bring all the new upcoming risers and revamp them just a little bit. They don't do it a lot, like Butch and NXT. That he he was going crazy, but now when he got here, this dude's uh he was quiet, lunatic. You know I, I don't like the Butch character, <laughs> but you know he's changing everybody. <laughs> Like Gunther, he's still the same person he was at NXT. Ugh, I don't like it. But everybody else, they do a little little small revamp. You know, they make him a little bit better. Man, I think that Gunther can be poised to take on the show. I think that he can be good. And I think that with him having Luth with Kaiser in his corner as, a, as a, another mouthpiece for the group, I think that they collectively together can run uh, Monday Night Raw. But um, they they got to put the bet on somebody because Seth Man is on his way out, Jack, and I hate to see it because Seth is is yeah. one of my favorite wrestlers, man. But with them announcing that Seth has these uh these back problems and he has a target on his back, you can tell that they're kind of prepping him to lose the belt to somebody. Now the question is who, you know what I'm saying? And now that we got some new blood. That just came on Monday Night Raw. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, where does that leave Seth Rollins? And who should Seth Rollins drop the belt to? Uh, Best Damn Nation, go on the comment box uh, and let us know who you think that Seth Rollins 
should who should be Seth Rollins is Seth Rollins is successor. <laughs> That's not the best way to say that. Oh man, look, uh, we got to talk about your boy Jay Uso, man. Uh, your boy Jay Uso all of a sudden just came back to the WWE and he popped his happy ass on Monday Night Raw. Man, the Uso is finally alone. They found a way, a creative way to break up the Usos. And I know it's going to be leading towards something. Maybe something that uh, a Survivor Series, Uso versus Uso. Or maybe they're going to try to push that all the way to WrestleMania and have Jay versus Jimmy at WrestleMania, which is one of their dream things to do. But right is now, Jay awesome? Uso, man, right now, uh, Jay Uso is hot, man. Jay Uso is hot. Um, you see the fan reaction to Jay when he came out? His music, just me, Uso. They want it. You know what I'm saying? And he started doing this, and you could see everybody in the crowd just <laughs> doing the same thing. He has crowd control. He still struggles on the mic a little bit. He, he still kind of struggles. You know, just, just getting better. Just getting better. Just, he get, he getting there. He getting there, but he ain't there yet. You know what I'm saying? But Jay Uso is a huge acquisition for Monday Night Raw, and for some reason, Cody Rhodes kind of ushered in Jay Uso. And so now they're saying, "Hey, since Jay is here, we're going to have to make some type of a trade to SmackDown," and not a lot of people are going to like it. So speculations is going around who's going to go to SmackDown. I'm thinking it might be Cody. I think they're going to bring Cody Rhodes to SmackDown because Roman is not there, right? And then John Cena is there right now. But once John Cena leaves, who's going to be that, that star on SmackDown to be able to carry the brand until uh, the bloodline storyline starts, you know, to come back up and, and Roman Reigns makes his appearance. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. Because right now, uh, they're trying to push Jimmy. And the fans are revolting against it. They are not going behind Jimmy. I think they put Jimmy in a really weird place. And uh, let's go back to SmackDown. On SmackDown, John Cena came out. The legendary John Cena came out. And uh, Jimmy came out to his new music, which was dope. Both of the brothers have dope music. You know what I'm saying? But the fans, their fans did not get behind Jimmy. And then, you know, Jimmy tried to kick... John Cena, John Cena caught it and hit him with an egg. An attitude adjustment, uh, which is John Cena's finishing move. And it made Jimmy look super weak, man. And I'm like, okay, if you're going to be a big heel on the show, if you're going to go the heel route, you have to establish yourself as a top star. You can't just say, I'm a star. I'm here. I'm Jimmy Uso. I, I, although we know your accolades, Jimmy is not a good singles competitor. And he has to prove that now that he's on his own. Now, he still has the bloodline, in which I'm thinking that he went back to the bloodline, but we don't know yet because they're kind of playing around with the whole thing. So, can Jimmy Uso stand on his own two feet? We're going to see. He's going to have to prove himself. He's going to have to. He ain't got no chance. He ain't got no choice. So, he's either going to have to be the new right-hand man for Roman Reigns or he's going to stand on his own two feet and, and compete. And I don't know if... <sighs> I want Jimmy to have it. Jay got the juice. I don't know if Jimmy got the juice. But we'll see. I mean, it's coming up within the next couple of weeks, man. We'll see what Jimmy and Jay both do on their respective brands. But I'm thinking that a, a major star from Monday Night Raw is going to go over to SmackDown. Personally, I'm thinking it's going to be Cody Rhodes. It got to be a star. It got to be a good trade-off. And next to Roman Reigns, to be, to be clear with you, next to Roman Reigns, the biggest star on SmackDown said unsaid was Jay Uso. Think about it. The next big star on SmackDown was Jay Uso after Roman. Now that can be, you can argue with me, you can argue with your mama all you want to. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter remains that Jay Uso has established himself as a top star. Jay Uso has uh, helped carry the bloodline storyline along because if it wasn't for Jay, a lot of people wouldn't have been as invested because Jay wears his heart on his sleeve. And he, he compels the story really well. 
And we were so invested into it. Even when Sammy came in and everybody loved Sammy, Jay was that measuring stick that 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 Sammy had to get over to be accepted into the bloodline. And then as soon as Sammy got accepted, he got kicked out. What two, three weeks later? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh you got you have to admit that Jay Uso was the big star. Now the thing is, can Jay Uso stand on his own? Can Jay Uso win the singles title? That's the question. If you got answers, put it in the comment box uh, for your boy Brian Renegade uh, and, and show us what's going on. Oh, man. Best damn nation. Holler at a player when you see me on the street, pimp. You know, uh, leave a message, comment. If you think Jay and Jimmy can stand on their own two feet as WWE superstars. I, don't think, I, don't think, I think Jay can. Jimmy's going to have a hard time, but Jay can't. Jimmy is going to have a hard time, but Jay can. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Jay Uso. It says it in his name. Now he's on the main roster with the Monday night main event. That's Jay. Jay got a lot of targets on his back, Jack. Jay, this is the thing with wrestling. This is the thing when you're in a wrestling faction. And your faction runs Ruck, Ruck, Ruck House. It's that, they, they go crazy on the whole roster. The bloodline beat up everybody. Everybody, buddy. It was a, not one person that was spared by the bloodline. So Jay, coming into Monday Night Raw, not, <laughs> number one, a lot of people on Raw feel like Jay is going to take their spot. And he is. A lot of people feel like that Jay Uso is going to be given the spotlight. And he is. Um, eventually, Jay Uso will win a belt. And he will. Um, so there's a there's a target on Jay Uso's back because he's there by himself. He doesn't have the bloodline and he's made all of these enemies to the point that when he came out and he was about to go backstage, you had uh, Drew McIntyre music hit. And Drew McIntyre just stood at him, looking like a giant, <laughs> just standing there and looking at him. And then Matt Riddle came out, started looking at him. Sami Zayn was Jay Uso saving Grace from getting his ass whooped at some point during that night because Sami Zayn had to come out and he had his little spiel and say, "Hey, I'm glad that you're here. Whoop the do? You broke away from the bloodline. Good for you." But Sami Zayn had to save Ju Jay Uso a couple of times. When when um, Drew McIntyre was sitting there staring a hole at Jay, Sami was like, hey, man, first night back, hey, stall him out. <laughs> stall him out, man. Don't beat him up. Right? Hey, first night back, just give him, just, hey, let him, let him live. Matt Riddle came out started looking at Jay. Hey, hey, first night back, let him live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That had to happen a couple of times. I'm pretty sure back sakes too. You can't go around beating up people and then causing all these enemies and then show up at your ops house and like, hey man, I I'm, I'm gonna put my feet on your couch. I'm gonna watch your TV. I mean, all the sandwiches in your refrigerator and you ain't gonna do nothing but sit here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He made a lot of enemies and uh, we'll see where the future lies for your boy. Jay Uso. So if you got love for Jay Uso, you know, sir, show some love for Jay because he gonna need it. I like so what I like about how they did Jay, how they made they made him a face. Yeah, they didn't turn him heel. You know what I mean? That's what makes it. I think it's gonna make it better because he going to Monday Night Raw as a face, and then you have Sami Zayn helping him be a better face. Right. So I think it's yeah. You know, everybody gonna be like, oh, they don't let water on the bridge. Yeah, I think it's gonna be cool for him on Monday, but uh, Jimmy as a heel, that don't look right at all. You just said and made a turn. You know what I'm saying? What other bridge meaning that hey, you know, this is old. Don't worry about it. We it, it's nothing. We are gonna move forward. Cause, cause I'm gonna tell you that that, that water, that water under the bridge is straight sewage, <laughs> and whether you try to forget it or not, you gonna smell it. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I, I want the best for Jay. I hope that Jay does 
uh, step out on his own and really becomes the main event, Jay Uso, and really takes over Monday Night Raw. But he had some challenges, and he had a lot of competition on Monday Night Raw. And so we will see how Jay Uso stands on his own two feet. But, man, that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and uh, and switch it over, man. Uh, your girl, Becky Lynch, uh, is, is back after, you know, defeating Trish, after uh, defeating uh, Zoe Stark. She is fighting for the NXT Women's Championship on Tuesday nights against Tiffany Stratton. Man, I don't know what to think of that. Bro. I don't know if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. And if she goes there and loses to Tiffany Stratton, where the hell does Becky Lynch go after this? No, I I got the feeling they're gonna make her lose. They're gonna make they're gonna make Becky Lynch lose. You feel right. me? That's what's gonna happen. But at the but at the same time, we cannot skip over the Trish and Becky fight. You feel me? She we can't. Had, yeah, if she had Trish look like a unicorn at the end of the match. You see oh, that yeah. night. Listen. Hold up. You know I always say it. Did you not see that knot? <laughs> Did you not see that knot on her forehead? Man, you said she was looking like a unicorn. Trish had a whole booty on her sandwich. I mean, she had a whole booty on her forehead, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was just, this is a sandwich right here. I'm about to eat this in a minute. Don't worry about it. But she had a unicorn titty. On her forehead. It was bad. She was beat black and blue. And that was her first cage match that she ever had in her whole entire career. And it kind of showed. But Becky took care of uh, uh, of Trish during that match. She made Trish look good during that match. Yeah. I'll give Becky all the credit in the world because that is a hard thing to do to make Trish Stratus look good. <laughs> this Trish Stratus. It's hard to do. Uh, like, so, well, I, going back to that. Yeah, yeah, going back to that, though. You know, I mean, I have a feeling they're gonna make Becky lose list to, uh, to Tiffany Stratton to make her to build up her character a little bit better. Cause that, you know, they got her playing that Barbie doll, um, prissy type. But if she lose, it makes her look stronger. You know, and that's like, oh, that's a fighting champion. You know, Tiffany Stratton ain't no damn fighting champion. We all know this. Like, like Liv Morgan. Huh. No. I think I think that Tiffany Stratton, and we're talking about the uh, NXT Women's Champion T Tiffany Stratton. I think Tiffany Stratton has all the tools that she needs to be great. I think that she could be the second coming to Mandy Rose, and in a lot of ways, she kind of is. Even though Mandy Rose's character was a little bit different, and Mandy Rose had a little bit more maturity uh, being on the main roster and, and having maturity in her character. Um, Tiffany Stratton can she she's a star in the making. She's really good in the ring. She can talk. She can carry on a promo. You might not like her uh, her Barbie isk Mean Girls kind of tone, but the girl can go. She's good and she has a great finisher, the prettiest moonsault, which is she jumps up on uh, two of the we call them two of the ropes in the corner and then flips off the top rope and lands on her opponent doing a, a beautiful moonsault. So Tiffany Stratton has all the tools that she needs to become a big star on main roster. Um, this is the thing. Do you have Tiffany Stratton drop the belt to Becky Lynch? And if that's the case, then what, what does that mean? Like, does, does, does she come to main roster with the belt? Like Dominic is with the, with the uh, North American Championship? Does she stay on Tuesday nights and try to bring more views to Tuesday nights? You know, the New Day did it when they went down and they won the NXT uh, championship, the, the NXT Tag Team Championships. They brought eyes. Dolph Ziggler, when he became champion and, and, and beat Braun Breaker, he brought eyes. And so for, um, for Tuesdays, if you put the man Becky Lynch down there on Tuesdays and make her a star and have her elevate all of the uh, all the talent there and and still maintain her relevancy on Monday Night Raw. It can work. Will it work? I don't know. How would the fans react to that? I don't know. 
Um, I think that they should put a belt on on Becky. I don't even know who's who's the women's who's the raw women's champion right now. Uh oh girl. Um the fact that it is uh who? EO Sky. On Raw. On oh, Raw. Oh. Who is it? The fact that you can't even think about it is is crazy right now. And I can't. I don't know why I don't know that. And I know damn near everything. So I'm trying to really remember who's. This, and that that's the crazy part. You got the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tripping. I am tripping. Rhea Ripley is the champion. Rhea. But yeah. you almost forget that yeah. she's champion because she's not really fighting for her belt like that. Yeah. She just had a knockout drag out fight uh with Raquel Rodriguez, which was very, very hard hitting. And it was a great match. But you almost forget that Rhea is the women's champion because she doesn't defend her belt. She's not really interacting with the women like that. She's really interacting with the men. Um, and we're going to transition over to Judgment Day, but man, what is is Rhea doing damage, or is she elevating the Raw Women's title? That's a question for you, Chef. Uh, she's doing a little bit of both. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> She's elevating it because, honestly, the only person I, that should have better be her for that belt was Raquel Rodriguez, but it made her lose it. I mean, it made her lose it, but she bringing it down because she don't defend it like that, like mostly everybody else did. I mean, when Charlotte had it, she defended it every week, but when Bianca Belair had it, she defended it every week. Even when Sasha Banks had it, she defended it every week. She just defended it when she's ready and when she wants to, and that's... That sounds like another uh, Brock Lesnar. Oh, she's going, she's going to Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns route for the yeah. women's title, and I'm not mad at it. And even though she's on TV every week, um, she's not really defending her belt like that. Um, I just saw something where uh, I can't remember who had made a comment, but they were talking about uh, Io Shirai. I believe it was uh, Conan. He was talking about Io Shirai. Uh, or Eo Sky, as she's known now, um, and saying that she is a boring champion. She really doesn't have a personality that you can get behind, um, and that they're kind of playing around the fact that Bailey uh, kind of might try to do something, yeah, and try to take the belt off of her or something like that. Um, I like Eo Sky. I think I still think it was a little early for her to get the championship. I think that she should have stayed like a, a good year in and just put out um, amazing matches and then throw the belt on her. I think it was way too early because we're seeing that it doesn't translate well to main roster, uh, even though the fans like EO, um, as far as her carrying the title and doing something to elevate the title, she is not doing that as we speak at this moment. Will she? Possibly. I don't even know that she's going to have the belt long because she definitely does have, I mean, Bianca is still there, even though Bianca has just got written off of TV. And of course, the great Charlotte Flair is on SmackDown. Throw the belt on her. Throw the belt on her and give give me Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley at, at Survivor Series. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not taking nothing from E.L. Scott. I'm an E.L. Scott fan. But right now, EO is is not elevating belt the women's title. So when you go to SmackDown, the only belt that you really have on SmackDown, and this is crazy, it's the U.S. title, which Rey Mysterio was holding. Roman is not there to defend his title. EO Sky uh, is, is the weak character right now, even though I love EO Sky. Her character is not strong. To be able to hold that title on her own. The tag team titles are still unified for some strange ass reason, and they're on Monday Night Raw. You know what I'm saying? So technically, the US title is the only title on SmackDown, which is weird to me. You know what I'm saying? So I wanna see, I wanna see everybody kind of step up more. I really do, especially on SmackDown. Now, like I said earlier, uh, with Jay Uso 
being traded to Monday Night Raw, who does SmackDown get? And I'm trying to think who does SmackDown get who would benefit on being on SmackDown. And the only person that I can think of that's a big enough star uh, that can translate well on SmackDown is Cody Rhodes. Or somebody from the Judgment Day. You know what I'm saying? I can definitely see Damian Priest going down to SmackDown and standing on his own two feet, and then they replace him with JD Madonna. I can definitely see that happening. Um, but you know, or Finn, yeah. But with Finn, with, but the thing is, will Finn make an impact on his own? And I'm not saying that Finn can't stand on his own two feet because he's done it for years. But with Judgment Day, and let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, since you just mentioned uh, Finn Balor, man, um, Finn Balor and Damian Priest had a had a battle at Payback, man, against Sami Zayn and KO, and they ended up pulling off the win. Now, first of all, this win was a complete team effort. It took five, six people <laughs> to be down. All Sammy and KO to take these belts off of them. Um, JD Madonna stepped in. Uh, Rhea Ripley stepped in. Dominic Mysterio stepped in. It was just, it was just a lot of moving parts. Um, and Sammy and KO couldn't keep up, man. They could not keep up. And so uh, now you have Judgment Day holding, literally holding. All of the gold on Monday Night Raw. And I want to show this before and after picture, man. You have uh, March 2023. And then uh, you have now. Now, Judgment Day has all the gold. They have the women's, ti uh, women's title. Uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor have the tag team titles. Dominic Mysterio has the NXT North American Championship. And Damian Priest also is holding the money in the bank belt. Which he is senior money in the bank belt, which now he is senior money in the bank. Uh, and that's a great picture, man, with uh with Judgment Day now being the top faction in WWE. Um, I believe that if they stay on the right track, stay motivated, they can be very dominant for a long time. But you know, they've been showing some cracks. I'm pretty sure those cracks are gonna start coming up again. But I'm glad to see that Judgment Day actually worked as an experiment. I think Edge should be somewhere crying tears of joy and uh, and upset, upset at the same time. Um, even if even if he came back, I think he would be a great manager for Judgment Day. But I don't think I think that since they're considering themselves all equals, I'm not sure if they're really looking for a leader. Although Rhea Ripley is said unsaid the uh leader of judgment day for real uh but it's good to see the judgment day uh is in their winning ways man and jd madonna is kind of kind of trying to slide his way in there you know i was trying to figure out the other day who did jd madonna remind me of i couldn't quite put my finger on it. i was like he reminds me of somebody i don't know who but he really reminds me of somebody he has a huge head. He's always angry. Uh, and he, he's a formidable opponent. I can't, I'm, I can't quite. It's a, he kind of reminds me of Lord Farquaad on strength. <laughs> Lord Farquaad. <laughs> uh, big head, little body. <laughs> Man, J.D. Madonna is dangerous in the ring. He can be a true asset to Judgment Day, and he actually really fits in. Um, I kind of hate to see this fanboy thing that he's doing right now. But if he does get, get in the group and the group accepts him, I think that he will be an added addition to the group. Um, and he will be more dangerous than Dominic. You know what I'm saying? So if you're having those tag team switches between uh, Finn and, and uh, J.D. Madonna or even Damian Priest and J.D. Madonna, I think that they can be a real force if they do add J.D. Madonna to the mix. You know what I'm saying? But that's something that we 
shall see. Uh, Chef Showtime, my playing partner. Um, we got to talk about it, man. It, it was a, a lot of events that happened, right? Uh, we got to talk about payback and some of these matches from payback. Uh, first of all, one of the best matches that I saw, and I'm going to go back to this picture I have an impression of, was LA Knight versus The Miz, which surprisingly, this match was really good. Um, this was <laughs> one of the promos that LA, uh, excuse me, that uh, The Miz did on LA Knight, uh, where he completely roasted LA Knight, and, and he kind of broke down LA Knight as a, from a character standpoint of how generic he is and how the Miz is actually a real generic, I mean, a real uh, authentic star. Um, but this match was was great. I loved every minute of it. I thought that the Miz really showed up and showed out during this match. I thought that he did a great job in showing that he's a, he's a top talent man and that he can kind of bring anybody over. Um, of course, LA Knight won the match at the end, but the Miz, I was I was very impressed with the Miz, and I hope that he does get more time on TV because the Miz is an absolute star. Uh, Chef, what did you think about the Miz versus LA Knight match? I, I, I love the match. The match was, at first it started off slow, but it got better. I, I like, okay, the match got good, and I, it got me interested to watch it. Cause at first I didn't want to watch it because I don't, I don't, the Miz. You know I mean, he been the same since he came into the show, you know. But L.A. Knight, the new upcoming stars rising to the top, man, made me like this. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I think I really enjoyed that match uh, with them too. Uh, let's talk about another match that happened, man. Uh, we just mentioned it a few minutes ago. We had Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez. I thought that that match was a slobber knocker, man. Them girls were swinging for the fences. I'm talking about blood, uh, <laughs> everything. Um, that was probably one of the best women's matches hit for hit wise that I've seen since watching like New Japan type stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, um I absolutely enjoyed the match. I thought it was good. I think uh, Rhea really showed herself as the dominant heel. And then um, Raquel Rodriguez was, she was, she was, she was beating Rhea ass a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? She was on that ass. She was on that ass. Uh, but it was good, though. I thought that they had a great match, man. I thought that they really matched up really well. Uh, of course, slimy ass Dominic came in and uh, and secured the win for Mommy. But the battle of the Mommies was really good. This was what I call the battle of the Mommies. You know what I'm saying? I thought this match was really good. Um, and Raquel is requesting another match uh, with Dominic Mysterio being barred from ringside. But I'm pretty sure another member of Judgment Day will come in and help. Uh, if she's smart enough, she would have said bar all the members from Judgment Day instead of just Dominic well, Mysterio. still have help, though, if they did that. Because J.D. Madonna is not, she not, he's not part of the Judgment Day. Aha! Aha! <laughs> Aha! <laughs> right. You're right about that, Chef. Um, but I want to see them go one-on-one -on -one again, man. I absolutely love, uh, love that match, and I think that they can uh, do some great things the next time that they face each other. We also want to talk about this match, man. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth freaking Rollins. I thought that this match was really good also. Um, I love how Shinsuke was able to speak in his uh, own language during the promos, man. I thought it was awesome for them to allow him to do that because I think that he's more comfortable speaking his own language. And to be honest with you, it felt like Shinsuke was like the ultimate bad guy in a in a martial arts movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was Shane Sun. You know what I'm saying? Um he he was uh very believable and I actually thought that Shinsuke Nakamura was going to take the belt off of Seth Frickin' Rollins uh during that match. And you know Seth pulled out the last ditch effort win at the end with the stomp. But boy did he get his ass whooped. Um, he even uh, left out in a wheelchair. His his wife had to wheel him out of the uh, arena, man, because his back was so jacked up. Shinsuke Nakamura showed how dangerous he actually is. And even on Monday Night Raw, when Seth Rollins was like, hey, man, we got to run this back. Um, it didn't sit well with me. We got to run this back. Shinsuke Nakamura was like, no, 
He was like, what you mean? I'm giving you a title shot. I'm giving you a shot to the gold. And you telling me no? That don't make sense. But in Shinsuke's mind, he was like, I'll do it on my own turn. And I'm glad he didn't do it because he really would have been picking the bones of Seth Rollins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, you know, if, if Seth did lose it um, and lose it in that way, I'm not sure how the fans would react to that and if they would react in the, the manner that management would want Shinsuke Nakamura to come in holding the goal. And it's just scared the guy. I don't know. I thought he was. I thought he was to take it off himself. But, you know, that match was really good. I hope they did do it again. I think they will do it again. Um, but, man, that was, I, 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 I love that match. I thought, I thought it was really good. Uh, really good build up to it. Um, and I love seeing it. We just talked about um, tag team titles changing with Sami Zayn and KO. Uh, versus Judgment Day. Judgment Day took that and uh, is now holding all the gold, man. Um, so it was some really good matches on the payback card. Chef Showtime, you know we got to do this. Um, we have to go back to school and overall grade WWE payback. Excuse me, class. Class. Shut up! Chef Showtime, if you had to give the payback event a grade from A to F, what would you grade payback? A B. A B? Woo! High marks from Chef Showtime. What made the show a B, Chef? Yeah. I think it was the Miz and um, <laughs> LA Knight, that that would make it a B. Like, it, it should have more. The, hmm, let, me, let me put this the right word. <sighs> they should have more matches. It was too short for me. It was too short. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a little short. And I think that they could have added some more matches. Uh, but I believe they also took off some matches. I think that the Chad Gable and Gunther match was supposed to happen. But in order for Gunther to kind of uh, beat the Honky Tonk Man's record and for it to really make sense, they had to do it on Monday Night Raw to make it official. Even though if he would have won it payback, it still would have been official. I think it had more uh, oomph on it, uh, having him win it on Monday Night Raw, officially beating the Honky Tonk Man's record. So, I think that match got cut, and I think that uh, the uh, the I think that match got cut, and I think another match got cut also, but I thought that the the, the event was actually really good. Uh, Best Damn Nation, go in the comment box, let us know what you thought about the payback event. Uh, what would you grade the payback event, A through F? Give us a grade, and I'll read it. Um, but yeah, man, I thought the, I, I would, I would give the event, I'll give it a C plus. I want to be a little stern on it. I give it a C plus. Um, there was some matches I kind of, when I was watching, I kind of tuned out during the middle of a little bit, but overall, I thought it was, I thought it was a solid show, a really solid, um, a solid show, man, all, all around. Even with the, you know the wrestling news about CM Punk getting fired on, and and then you know the Collision show going on, and the death of Bray Wyatt, and all the stuff, all the stuff from wrestling that happened this week, I thought that they pulled off a really good uh, match at Payback, man. And and the people who needed to win, did they win? I don't know. You let us know in the comment box what you think, man. Sure. Man, this is a hell of a show. Uh, you know, we usually go a little bit longer. Uh, but I think that today uh, we're going to let the people breathe a little bit. Um, and, and we're going to have some more footage. So, fans, um, you know what I'm going to do, Chef? I'm going to make this a little different. I'm going to go back because I love showing this interview. This was uh, one of our top interviews that I really wanted to get. Uh, we're going to have him come on the show. Uh, later on this year, man, but uh, we had to ask the great 
Ron Simmons uh, some questions, man. And he uh, talked to Mr. Everything and let him know uh, a couple of things about himself and some of his favorite matches. And how does he feel about um, black, young up-and-coming black stars uh, really making an impact in the wrestling world. So beautiful people, I'm going to bless you with a blast from the past. Listen to this interview from the great Ron Simmons and the best damn nation's very own Mr. Everything, Victor Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Everything, Victor Andrews, and I am blessed blessed beyond blessed to have this legend of professional wrestling this hall of famer of professional wrestling mr ron simmons yes sir man i gotta tell you i i i usually don't get lost for words i usually don't get starstruck but i mean you are the uncle for all of us you are the reason why we do the things that we do you're the reason why we're able to do things that we're able to do. You know, so coming from you, particularly being a young black man, I can't tell you how much that means to me. But see, understanding this, right? Everything has a beginning, and for myself, others played a platform for me. So, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do, you know? Continue that going, you know? So I know I'm doing that, that that's what it means to you. So now that's what I'm expecting you to do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, so that's how that goes, you know? Absolutely. No, I'm not simply to do it by myself. I had others to come before me that laid that stage, you know, and said it for me. Okay. So I'm keeping that going, you know, and you're going to keep it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So yeah, man, that means everything in the world. So being the very first world, African American world heavyweight champion. Black. Yes. Black world heavyweight champion. Right. Explain to me what that feeling was, and explain to me how you felt seeing someone like Kofi Kingston becoming the first black WWE champion. The same way, brother, looking at the, you know, as it's what it said in for me, right? I'm sure the feeling was the same. You understand me? Because I didn't really, I didn't really grasp it at that point. My sights were set on just being champion. Okay. Later on, the significance of it hit me. You understand? Because of his recovery over the years with you, right? With others. And the best part about it is that not only with just young black men, you know, hey, we're talking women, of all other people, all other colors and that, that too, you know what I'm saying? So man, listen, all these years later, for it to have that impact, I, I mean, you can't act for no more than that, you know? Hey, I'm a blessed man. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so one more quick question. Of all the years of being uh, in a tag team, or you and the, uh, in, uh, Butch, and then you and um, JBL, and ADA, everything you've done, Nation of Domination, tell me, what is the most profound moment of your life? And once again, we, we just been a struggle, right? And I've been in some wonderful, you know, we had some great tag partners, you know? Butch being a mentor to me, right? And of course being in the tag with JBL, right? right? Both are fantastic, right? But becoming world champion and being the first black world champion, that, 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 that impact, bro, listen, that's, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's the highlight. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and for the meaning, not just being champion, but the meaning of it. Yes. You know? Right. For the inspiration, inspiring others, you know? Like you said, you know? And then, and, I just had to sum my entire career, bro, and just be dead. <laughs> it's Mr. Everything. Ron Simmons, back to you and the guys of the best damn wrestling podcast. Thank you. Oh, man. Damn! I have to say that Mr. Everything's damn was pretty weak compared to Ron Simmons' damn. <laughs> I wish he would have put up a little bit more pace in that damn. Uh, but that was a great uh, interview from your boy, Mr. Everything, interviewing the great Ron Simmons. Uh, that's the interview that we've been trying to get on the show for a while, man. So uh, we were blessed to have that 
that interview from Mr. Ron Simmons. And listen, we got more interviews coming for you later on this year on the best damn wrestling podcast. So tell your mammy and them, your uncles, your cousins, your grandma, that the best damn wrestling podcast is on. And we uh, we got more interviews for the beautiful people. Chef, sure. man, let the beautiful people know what you got going on and where can they find you. Work, work, and more work. And you can find me on Facebook at Dante Carter. You can find me on Twitch, Dante Carter. All right. Twitch, Twitter, Black Planet, MySpace. You know what I'm saying? Pornhub, all those places. You can find Chef Showtime. <laughs> and show some, show, show some, some love, man. Uh, my name is Brian Renegade. You can find me on all platforms at Brian Renegade. Um, I got some good stuff going on. Uh, one of the things that I really uh, want to promote is Blue Hearts for Autism. Uh, we are growing and moving with that. Uh, Blue Hearts for Autism uh, provides resources and uh, medical equipment and, uh, and, and homemade for individuals who have autism and other disabilities so if you want to support a good cause uh they have coffee that they sell they have paraphernalia that they sell uh or you can just go donate to a good cause so go to www.bluehospitalautism.com and support a great cause and of course if you want to support the show you can go to our social media pages man we all over the place you can go to our instagram at the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. You can visit our Facebook group at The Best Damn Wrestling Nation. That's a private group. You go in and you can see all the content that we post. You can go to our Facebook page at The BD Wrestling Podcast where we post all our stuff and you can actually watch the episode. You can go on our Twitter uh, at Best Damn Crew. You can visit our Twitch at The Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. And if you have a TikTok, you can visit our TikTok at Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. And if you would like to support the show, well, the only thing that you have to do is go to, actually, you can go uh, support the show a couple of ways. You can go to our website, uh, live, and you can donate directly to the show, or uh, you can just go on our Patreon um, that we have, www.patreon.com backslash the best damn wrestling podcast. For as low as five dollars, you see them five from ages. Um, you can donate to the show. We got all kind of stuff for you. We got uh, shirts, hats, gloves, socks, uh, behind the say behind the scenes footage. We got condoms. We got all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't recommend using the condoms, but we got all kinds of stuff at the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. So go and visit our Patreon page, www.patreon.com backslash the best damn wrestling podcast to support your boys. Or if you want to support us in the other way, if you don't want to give us no money, we understand people are broke these days. If you want to support us, man, just share our page. Share our page, share our content. Tell somebody that like wrestling or sports or entertainment of any kind to join the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast and you can see what we got going on. We just showed you an interview with the great Farouk, the great Ron Simmons. We just had an interview not too long ago with the great Ron Killings or Our truth We've had EC3. We've had Gangrel. We had Ricky Morton. What more do you want from us? <laughs> We got more interviews coming this year, man. Uh, and we're so excited. So support your boys. Support what we got going on at the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast. Uh, right now, we have 2.2 million impressions online and growing. So people are watching this. People are tuning in and they listening to what your boys got going. So if you have a small business and you want to promote your business on the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast, then hit us up uh, at the Best Damn Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. And you can request to be on the show, or you can request to sponsor uh, an episode, or you can tell a little a bit about your business and what you got going on. Uh, but like I said, you can follow me on all platforms at Brian Renegade if you want to check what I got going on. Chef, you know we do this each and every week. We got to give the people some inspiration. 
We got to leave the people with some hope. We got to give a good word for the beautiful people. Digging in my preacher bag. Chef Showtime, do you have a final word, a word of motivation for the beautiful people to get them through their week? Uh, I'm going to have to go to the Forrest Gump saying, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I like that. Life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. But either way, uh, whatever you get, you just take it in stride. You know what I'm saying? Take it in stride. Uh, a word for the beautiful people that I have. Um Take care of your body, people. Your health is number one, especially when you start getting up there in age, start thinking about your health. And especially when you get over 30, things that used to work don't work no more. Uh, you start, uh, bones start cracking, back start aching. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you eat a sandwich and you just get fat and look like you're three months pregnant. But take care of your body. Take care of your health. Your health is... Uh, your number one asset, your health is uh, the the thing that's most important, more than money, more than anything else. You got to take care of yourself. You got to be here for the people that love and depend on you and care about you. You know what I'm saying? So take care of your health. Take care of your body. Um, take care of your mind. You know what I'm saying? If you if you having some issues and uh, you need to talk to somebody, find somebody to talk to. Mental health is is just as important as physical health. You know what I'm saying? So you have to do both. So get you somebody that you can talk to. Try some mental exercises that are strengthening your mind. Strengthen your spirit. And get your ass in that gym on that trail and work your body out. Because it's the only body that you got. While you're here on this earth, you got to take care of. Because ain't nobody else going to do it. And if you get to the point that somebody else got to take care of your body, then it's already too late. So while you got it, while you're breathing, while you're up walking around, while you got a full use of all your phalanges and all your fingers in your hands, work out, get your body right, get your mind right. Because only you can take care of you. Chef, you like that word? Oh man. Well it's very good work. Acting up. Oh no, you good, brother. <laughs> well listen, we can't hold you no longer, people. Uh visit us on our social media pages, share uh our page, show us some love. And uh as always, we love you, we care about you, and we will see you next week. All the next best damn wrestling podcast. Chef, you are a gentleman and a scholar, sir. We will see you next Wednesday. Beautiful people, we bid you adieu. Bye-bye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>